talking. It started, you know, minutes before then. Yeah. When I was being an idiot. That's kind of fun though. <laughs> 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 Random, random, random beer. The ceremony is about to begin. Whatever. Hello and welcome to a glorious Wednesday here in the Okanagan. I am Tanner. Everybody. Yes, yes. I'm Tanner. That's Tyson. Amanda, somewhere. She doesn't have a microphone today. Um, this is PPHT. Today is a nice, fun Wednesday. It was going to be wrong way Wednesday, but we changed wrong way Wednesday to why to brew Wednesday. Yeah. Why you should brew Wednesday or just, I don't know. We, it's we'll a come po- up with something. Yeah. I mean, it's a podcast. That we're just supposed to be talking. We don't even need all these segments. I don't know why we're trying so hard to do that. Anyway. Well, I think it, I think it's good. I, mm. I didn't have a name for today, but I was excited about the show today because we were changing it today. Yeah. So, so it should be interesting nonetheless, right? Yeah. Good, exciting stuff. Yeah. Yeah, good, exciting stuff. We got kittens at home. Oh yeah, your yep. kittens. Yep. Yeah, they're they're going on about five weeks old, and yeah. they are annoying. Yeah, five weeks of destruction. Yep. Uh, they no longer want constant attention from mommy. They want constant attention from Tanny. <laughs> so they meow like they're on fire until I come and pick yeah. one of them up. They're cats. They don't ever stop that. So that's that's fun. That's good. That's a good. Uh, Good time. Anyway, how are you, Tyson? I'm good. It's a nice Wednesday. Yeah. All our animals are alive. Yeah. Our one piglet that made it is fat. Yeah. That little guy (laughs) is going to be the biggest. Bigger than Kevin? uh, Yeah. What do you call that? Spoiled single child? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Ah, yeah. How do you pigs do when it's like 100 degrees? You know, we worried about them, and I have this big uh, sunshade cover that we extend out for them and then i realized that pigs are all over texas and <laughs> texas is like the hottest place that you could ever live yeah, ever it's, it's terrible it's the service of the sun and they live down there just fine yeah so th- that, that just occurred to me about a week ago i worry a lot less now don't they don't you have to like make a mud pit for them though yeah they do like the mud pit yeah we have irrigation ah. you just turn on the hose let it yeah. rip yeah, just give a little mud yeah. pit so they can go and. It's pretty funny watching those fat whales try to roll around in the mud pit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I I was always so disgusted with ducks for like the same kind of reason because instead of having a nice clean like. Oh yeah, they'll instantly just destroy it. Yeah, and they don't want it clean. Like I had this like little pool thing, and I and it would be clean, and I put nice clean water in there, and it's nice, and they wouldn't fucking touch it. <laughs> and all, all it they gets green and then all they, they would do is just go over there and shit in it and then they wouldn't touch the water and they would squawk for some fucking water i'm like what and then when <laughs> the water finally got dirty enough after a few days then they then they loved it you couldn't get them out of it and i'm like you are the most disgusting creatures yeah. just sit there and drink their own you know like yeah yeah they're disgusting but that's one of the most fun animals to have have on the farm the i disagree are, you disagree i disagree uh well, they arc sometimes. It depends if you have. I mean, they're obnoxious yeah. and they crap everywhere and they make <laughs> a giant mess. But they're fun. Come squawking up to you. They're yeah. actually friendly. Sometimes. No, mine weren't that friendly. But I had a lot of males. Ah. And that was a problem. That seemed to be a big issue. They were really mean. <laughs> oh, that's no good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, and I, you can tell the females because they're all like tattered and like all their yeah, feathers yeah. are gone because the males yeah. are all picking on them. We and start shit. separating ours off when they do that. Yeah. We lock the mean ones in a cage. Yeah. Shoot at them with the Red Rider BB gun. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they're mean as hell. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so, it's so back ass words from what you'd think normal animals are or what you know normal animals yeah. to be. Because normal animals, they go fight other males to get the females. Like, even even men. Like, even, you know, our species. Yeah. And ducks are like, actually, we've got a couple guys here, and there's only a couple gals. You know what we're going to do? <laughs> hey, you and me, buddy, let's team up on them, and let's let's peck their eyes out and pull all their feathers. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Like, what, <laughs> what in the world? I think that's just the weirdest thing. Because I, I, I don't know what. If they're all blind and can't... We screwed up evolution somewhere and have these flocks of them running around our yards instead of naturally cruising around the environment. Or those ducks would just be picked off. Oh, there's three ducks all all ganged up. Let's go pick one of them off. Yeah. Mm, nice dinner for a fox or a coyote. 
Mallards are cool, though, man. Mallards are really pretty. I had a couple mallards, both males. You yeah. could tell because they were really, really pretty, you know? Yeah. They had the cool colors. Yeah. Man, they had some cool colors. Yeah. Anyway, today is, we already told you what today is. It's Wednesday. But it's a nice, special Wednesday because it is two weeks after we brewed our oh yeah sweet, lovely, tasty heifer. Yeah. So we haven't even told anybody out in the community yet that we have some. They'll be flocking in the door soon. Well, it was our podcast two weeks ago on Wednesday. That we would have some, but we haven't told anybody that it's done. We told them what to say to us if they heard that podcast to That's get right. some free yeah. heifer. I guess yeah. everybody better go listen back to the previous week's Wednesday's podcast. Yep, you might you might want to do that. Because if you don't know the magic words, you don't get nothing. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I know the magic words, which they're not really magic words. I just hear all the time, so I just know that there's sweet heifer here. <laughs> so anyway, this is our two-week taste tester. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's got that sweet heifer aroma. It doesn't punch you in the face as hard as the first batch, though, because we put we have that an extra gallon to dilute it down a little bit. Yeah, we robbed a gallon out of the last batch before we before we finished it off. Before you put that it's that like a, the fruit packet in. Yeah, that yeah. uh, lasted long. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So much for eighty one percent. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's terrible. We've been on here for seven minutes. Yeah. GoPro died. That's fantastic. That's like a that's like a cell phone after two years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you have the cell phone and you're like, man, this thing won't die. I've had to, you, when you first get it, you're like, I have to charge this cell phone in like a week. And then two years later, it's like, I can't go 20 minutes without charging <laughs> my phone. 100% you look at it in half an hour and it's at 50. Just, just when I got it paid off. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. All that fun stuff. Anyway, yes, this sweet heifer is... Man, that's like a such it's such a fruity, such a fruity aroma. How would you describe that aroma? It's pretty balanced fruitiness this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's oh, not. Oh yeah, we used the Huel Melon hop. Mm-hmm. So not the mosaic, the the yeah. Huel Melon. Uh, initially, on the the one week taster, I I did taste a difference, but now it's actually very similar to the first batch with the mosaic. Yeah. No, I love the smell of this. That. Uh, Man, that's a nice balance. That fruit pack definitely definitely helps out when we didn't take a gallon or two out you know when we had the full batch to add it's pretty pretty damn tasty i tell you what mm-hmm. still has that little bit of the cideriness there mm-hmm. it's really balanced this time it, it was is. almost a little bit last time it was a little bit fruit and then and then the 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 wheat beer this time it's just kind of all blended well together yeah i would have to agree with you ah. cider kit Two pounds of steeped honey malt and four pounds of Bavarian wheat malt extract in a couple of weeks and delicious cider. And what, two rounds of Huel Melon hop oh, additions? Yeah. One yeah. at, what, 60 minutes and one at Flame Out? Both of them? Well, yeah, it was like five minute boil in one, 190 for the other one. So Whirlpool, mm-hmm. Flame Out and Whirlpool. Mm. Yeah, so maybe that's where some of the, we're getting some other flavors because we didn't have that hot bitterness in the background. Because we didn't actually do a full 60-minute boil of any hops. Mm-hmm. It's all late addition. So it's going to be all aroma and flavor, but none of the bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our crowd that doesn't like the hops will probably enjoy that a lot. Man, if we had on tap, I'd I'd sell the shit out of that beer. Oh, dude, totally. <laughs> people I don't even know last time we had this, people were just like, hey, man. Oh, yeah, people coming out of the woodwork. Hey. Hey, I was just seeing if I could, you know, like s- maybe get a. Get a glass of that sweet hover you had? Um, sure. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll have to start another one of those before this one's gone, which means like tomorrow. And I want to beer n- brew another beer. We I need to brew another beer because we got to do be our videos. Yes. Yes. So I think we should, uh, I think we should Ooh, take out yeah, two we birds. Can, we can experiment with a couple of different yep. varieties of this recipe. This recipe. This recipe. That recipe. This recipe, of which I didn't make a brew sheet for. Supposed to have a brew sheet to show everybody. <laughs> Whole show's ruined. See you guys later. <laughs> nice picture up later. Mm-hmm. But we need to decide what the recipe is before I can put it on the brew sheet. Ah. Oh, is this that. your reindeer poop? Yep. Nice. Yeah, reindeer poop. Mm-hmm. Red Velvet Express. Or the Red Velvet Express. So we were talking about this. What You said it was like going to be a red amber ale with uh, white coffee? Yep. Not white chocolate, but 
white, white coffee. coffee. Yeah, so when he first mentioned this, the first thing I thought of was those like red velvet cookies. And I don't know why. <laughs> reindeer for, poop. I could yeah, I, I, I don't know for, for whatever reason, somebody. A, a, a reindeer poop. Somebody put that to my brain. I don't know. Maybe it was what my mom or sisters called those cookies. But like those red velvet cookies with the white chocolate chips. I just kn- known them as reindeer sh- poop or reindeer something. Okay. And I could have swore that it was like written on the label. Like it was like red velvet cookies or, you know, reindeer whatever, a.k.a. red velvet cookie. I don't know. What the fuck. Reindeer shit. We're going to make reindeer shit uh, beer, though. So I needed what I was thinking today is that this this seems like a really excellent beer for like a golf outing. <laughs> need a little bit of coffee. Need a little bit of booze. I don't want to talk about golf. I'm still sore on that subject. Well, I was going to try to fix that. Ah. I thought that we need to pick uh, uh, the strength of this beer. What what strength of beer would you want for golfing? I'm going to want to see some input, see any other golfers out there. Uh, it's going to be relatively low. Yes, yeah, so you want like four and a half or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, target like a four and a half. And maybe when we're doing our beer our beer kits, we can taste, uh, we make a couple of different ones. Maybe we'll make like a four and a half and a six, adjust the recipes around, see what we like. See if we can keep all the maltiness and wonderfulness of a beer between the two or between the three. See what we do. See which variety of this beer comes out the best. And you're still talking about the reindeer poop? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you're going to make like, is it going to have like that nice like coffee? Yeah, I want to get, I want to. So our coffee supplier, Cafe de Arte, uh, the gal that I was talking to, the salesperson, most everybody uses the white coffee and the really sugary drinks. Mm-hmm. What it, do you remember what she said? What did she say? Because white coffee is like... That's how she got the beaties is by drinking the white coffee because they have to flood it with white chocolate. Yeah. It's some flavor she didn't like about the white coffee. So I want to test and see how this comes out in the beer and how sweet of a beer we need to balance it all out. Mm. So there's going to be some testing in here, but I thought it would be fun for, for that uh, you know, sporting outing style beer. Keep it in the lower percent range. See if we can have it taste good. Get a little bit of a, a buzz of both sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And see if we can get some input. Some uh, Maybe offer some shirts out there and, and have the shirts this month go for Tanner's New Clubs Fund. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So I thought we'd take all the profit for the the shirt sales of the reindeer poop and, <laughs> and see if we could get Tanner some new clubs. <laughs> so anybody that knows Tanner and likes his uh, golfing experiences, maybe they'll help... And uh, I wanted to put a link for shirts at the show notes page Aww. so we can uh, get Tanner some, some shirt buying activity going. <laughs> Maybe we can get him a set of new clubs. And then when somebody returns his other clubs, he can use the new clubs and beat them with them. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and so all proceeds of our uh, reindeer poop <laughs> endeavors for the month <laughs> go to Tanner's new club set. Yay. I'm yeah. happy about that one. Yeah. Thanks. I did not. I did not. You're gonna bring that out. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was all. That was all around uh, trying to link up our hobbies with other hobbies. Yeah. Yeah. That was the. That was the excitement of my. Yeah. I, I mean, like, that wait a minute. I, I like golfing, but I don't usually golf. I brew beer, and I go find the golfers, and try to teach them how to brew beer, and then maybe we go golfing, and all this whole circle of the world comes together. Yeah. And then we have beer to go golfing. It's it's a wonderful match. Yeah. Or boating. Or boating. Or yeah. fishing. Ooh, we should buy our way our way into a boat with our sweet heifer. Ooh. We just take Growler to the beach and be like, hey, you got a boat? I got some beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would be kind of a cool, like, to, to try to do is, you know, because when you think about all these, like, uh, golf, fishing, boating activities, hobbies that you're talking about, man, like, you just think of, like, Coors Light or Bush Light. Yeah. Like, you just think of domestic lights that people are drinking while they're doing that. Or seltzers. Yeah. Like, that's the two big ones. People are drinking, like, White Claws or they're drinking Bush Light. That's a perfect pairing right here in our glass. Not super heavy. Super tasty. Everybody will enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got to get away from this Bush. Or Heffenweisen's. Well, it's just easy. You know, it's... Yeah, you go to the store on your way and you throw some ice and some cheap-ass crap beer and a cooler. Yeah. I mean, and it's just like going and, uh, but but then you got to think of it like this too. Brewing beer is like fishing. Like, yeah, you can go to the store and you can get fish to come home and, and cook for dinner and you're done. But like, then you don't, you know, then you miss out on the whole like fun of fishing. Don't know how fresh it is. Yeah. Don't know well, where it came from. Yeah. And, and you know, not only just like going out and fishing is fun, but yeah. it's also like, 
you know, sometimes you try new shit too. Yeah. You try new jigs and yeah. spinners and new corks spots. and yarns and baits or whatever, you know, kind of thing like that to see what works better. And it's just kind of like beer brewing. Yeah. And that excitement when you hook the fish. Yeah. Like that's when you've cracked your, your first home brew. It's like the wow moment. The excited kid running around with their fish on their fishing pole. Look what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then all your friends get to enjoy it. I mean, talk about, you know, something you can do. You can share. Mm -hmm. You can share your beer brewing. Well, and the the curiosity factor is there, too. Yeah. Like, when you show up to a party and you just have a bunch of Coors lattes (laughs) or, or Bush lattes, you know, people are like, oh, great, thanks, Tyson. You fucking brought... Uh, Coors Light, man. I'm so yeah. excited. And then, but then when you bring a couple growlers or you bring, you know, some like flip top bottles, people are like, hey, uh, what do you got there? I'm like, oh, dude, check this out. And you pour them a cup or a glass and they're like, oh, that's interesting. Curiosity level goes way up. Yep. So, something to chat about, something to talk about at the party. Yeah. Yeah. People, and people always have questions. Like, yeah. people always have questions of just like, because it, I mean, there's only 1.1 million people in the United States that brew beer. So, like, if you really think about that, it's not a high. That's that's nothing. That's point. That's 0.275 percent of the population. That's crazy. Mm. So it, it 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 arouses curiosity when you're just like, ah, man, I got my own beer that I brewed, right. and then when they taste this, and they're like, you brewed that? <laughs> like, I like I would go to the store I and buy if that. That's part of the fear that everybody just thinks that you're going to come out with crap. I mean, it hasn't been very hard to make some really delicious beer. We haven't tried all that hard. Well, no, and we even we even relinquished how to make this beer. We even just, we told you. And it's just like, man, that's really easy. Yeah, you can do it in a three-gallon <laughs> pot on your stove. Yeah, yeah, with some stuff that you just buy at the store, and yeah, not hard. Oh, that'd be interesting. I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can seal up the lid on those pots and just uh, let's see if we can use them as fermenters. That'd be an interesting test. Oh yeah, yeah. Send out the whole kit. Use it to brew. Use it to ferment. Something. The bucket. I don't know. I got to try s- different stuff all the time for some stupid reason. I can't just stick with the same thing. So no, the the pans. Oh, you got those brewing pans. Get done brewing. Just chill it down. Throw your yeast in it. Oh yeah. So just like a lockable lid. Yeah, I've been trying to find a a reason to be able to get a whole supply of those for yeah. some pan. Some kind of You've already boiled it. It's already sterilized. Mm-hmm. Get it all clean and settled and yeah. ready and done. Have a couple of brew pots and nice glass lid on them. Yeah. It's got a little hole in it. You got a little hole in it? Well, yeah. should the hole should be dual purposed for the airlock and for the thermometer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it should just have like, and then you can have like the flip up snap things. Yeah. And then when, w- so you can take it on and off while you're through the process. Then when you're done, you chill it down. You can put that on, snap it down so it's nice and tight and airlocked and then throw the airlock in there. Yeah. Oh, that'd be sweet. Seems kind of fun. That seems like. I found I found an old notebook this morning. So I had Rebecca's notebook that has recipes in it. I was looking over some of my notes. December 27th, 2009, 8.37 p.m. Sunday, which means that Monday was a work day. I decided to be brewing beer at 8.37 at night on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> the notes stop. 1 a.m. Pot cooling in snow. <laughs> <laughs> 1 a.m. <laughs> There's no more notes. I'm not sure what happened with that batch of beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of notes and finding um, notebooks, I had the unfortunate event of finding my college backpack. <laughs> Last night was the unfortunate event because like the cat shit and pissed all over it. Oh no. Not the little kittens, the cat. Yeah. Obviously. So I was like, well, I guess it's time to go. And I was like, I don't really know if there's anything in here worth keeping or whatever. I was just gonna throw the whole thing out. And I was like, I've lived this long since college. Not you never opened it. Not opening it. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Um, but I was like, ah, maybe. Because I did have some like pretty cool classes, right? And one of my classes in college was just music. So, you know, I was like, well, I should I should probably hang on to that book if it's in here, right? Oh, it was. A couple anthologies and stuff. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I'll hang on to those. Then I found a notebook, too. I was like, this looks like a no- nice notebook. I opened it up. It was mostly empty. Just like all of my, most of my college notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do so good in college. <laughs> and so I was trying to, so I took a second to try to read math and other notes uh, that I took from college. Oh, yeah. Total gibberish. <laughs> no clue what the hell this is. So you wrote them, but yeah, yeah, it was my handwriting because it's barely legible. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, oh man, 
what in the world? And like, and then I thought about it. I'm like, zero interest. Like instantly. Like I was interested in opening it to see what was in there. And then as soon as I started reading the material, I'm like, not interested. Like doesn't even hook, grab me nothing. Like, right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why school sucks. Because I don't learn anything that's, that I want to learn. I'm like, I haven't used this knowledge since I was supposed to in college. Yeah. Instantly just like have no, I no interest in continuing reading. Like, it does not even interest me in a little bit to learn this material again. <laughs> it's true. You know, like to get your degree, you have to take these whole lists of courses that you have no relationship with. Yeah. At all. And the, and, and like, like you're not not just maybe it's useful, but like it's not your style at all. Yeah. And they force you to go. I mean. You know, on some level, it's like, oh, life experience. But that was all supposed to be in high school. Man, like, but that's the yeah, thing that... High like, school, I could see why they just force you to do shit. Well, I could see that, too. And, and it's kind of like playing a lot of sports when you're a child. Like, when you're young, yeah, you should play Try soccer and, and baseball and whatever else. You know, to kind of get a grip and be like, because that's what I did. You know, I played all these sports. And then when I got older, I was like, baseball and football. I don't really care about soccer anymore. Not Not a big fan of basketball. I'm glad I played it when I was younger because cause then when I got to be older, I was like, no, I want to focus on football and baseball. Yeah. That's it. Football in the fall, baseball in the spring. Cool. Instead of just like not ever doing anything. Yeah. So I get that. When you get to college, though. You're prepping for something. You, yeah. And the thing is, is, like, you're not prepping to do all of these things at once and your job, you're prepping to do one job better than other people, hopefully better than everybody, right? So how come, you know, you, they still require, like I had, I was going in to be a construction manager and I was taking earth science and learning about clouds and waves. And it's just like, exactly, exactly what does this help me with? On construction management. I, I need to know, like, some architectural stuff. I think that's, I'm like, what we've seen in our time and thinking about what what to expect in a, f a future forecast. Like, college is just jacked right now. Yeah. Like there should be mastery. You should be able to float around and learn different things. Mm -hmm. But it should be, like, trying to master what you're doing. And then if you decide to change realms, you should try to master that as well. And then if you decide that you need a bunch of math because you were going to move a little bit from construction management towards like a mix of architecture, then you can go take all the math classes. Yeah. Why don't you master the finances of, of construction management first mm -hmm. instead of worrying about the clouds? Or maybe yeah. you like the clouds and you're in construction management and you start getting into weather. Like then yeah. you can learn about the clouds. Yeah, but I had... I, I mean, I liked, I, I paid attention, the only, okay, well, I didn't pay attention at all. So, out of the whole, was it semester? Yeah. So, I had earth science for an entire semester. I went 13 days. <laughs> I attended 13 days of earth science. And it was only for the waves. Because I, I surfed. It was still over uh, on the coast, and I yeah. surfed. <laughs> so, I went and paid attention for the waves. But I could, the teacher was boring as balls. And I could not keep my eyes open through it, let alone on, like, Stuff like the clouds and everything else. I was like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know, uh, so I made the only classes that I really went to were like psychology, English, because I, I love to write, weightlifting and music. Yeah. All stuff you could have done just on the side. Yeah. And stuff I still do on the yeah. side because now I'm a writer. <laughs> I still lift weights yeah. and I still play music. And I just and, and because I'm a writer and do and write sales copy, I key into psychology, <laughs> the yeah. underlying reasons. Why, you know. So anyway, like we're I, I was trying. To think it wasn't always history. designed, I don't think, for a younger crowd. Right. Like, didn't you kind of go in, unless you were uber rich where your parents just sent you off like finishing school? Mm. You're going here. You have no choice about it. The rest would be. And really intellectual guys but that would come back in their later years and just use the li library and use the research time. Um, but it seemed like more like a continuing education program, not a yeah. you're going to be educated in this period of time and then you're leaving. Yeah, yeah, It yeah, just yeah. seems all screwed up. Yeah. 
Like, can you go back now? You should be able to go back now and ask about waves and maybe do a little wave re- research. And, mm-hmm. you know, here's here's how I applied them to my, my life. And I'm going to go back and learn some more. Then you'd have to reapply. It'd be like joining school all over again. It should be kind of like a flow in, flow out information just shared and, and compressed there at the college site. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's like, no, you're coming here for your purpose. We're teaching you these things. And then we're kicking you out and you're doing your stuff. Just And it never works that way anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I was talking with somebody just the other day and it was really shocking. So they went to college, four year degree in marketing, which is what I do. Right. They spend all this money and have all this degree and they just can't understand how like I can cash big checks and they work for a measly (laughs) hourly wage. And I spent nowhere near 60 grand for my degree. I don't even have a degree. I spent, I don't know, maybe maybe upwards of more than I needed to, but 5,000 and then maybe be a year. And that's educating myself on the side. And I can go out and I can find clients for, you know, their monthly wage that I just have one client and I work like an hour a day or two hours a day on. I have been really entertained by the massive volume of people that you see in my comment sections. Like, yeah, I spent my whole college career in marketing, and I could have just done this course in an evening. Mm-hmm. And I just learned more than I did in my whole. Yeah, no, that was a that was a and real. It's a, it's repetitive though. That was a real fucking comment that 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 one of my colleagues said. He yeah. goes, he goes, this was an hour long, and he goes, I learned more in that hour about how to successfully market to people than I did in four years of college because they're still teaching print. In college, they're missing the underlying point. They mm-hmm. could teach print and what it's done well and how they grasp attention, but they're they're trying to teach people you should go do print and do it this way. Like, why not just teach where print was and what it was good for? Mm-hmm. It's the w- you will learn this, not yeah. Why don't you learn how to learn? Because yeah. this market's changing, and they don't and they don't teach. And you see with regular ads, you know, I mean, you just kind of see who who is college educated as far as marketing and who was really educated in marketing Mm -hmm. because there's guys out there that when you read their ads or their copywriting or their or you see their vsls their video sales letters and stuff you can't help but you have to click on their shit and it's going to make you disgusted when they when you realize like no dude they're just average joes like they were they quit high school like some of the people that i know like they just quit high school because they're like, man, I just saved up my birthday money, bought this course for uh, twelve hundred bucks, and before I was in college, I was making ten, twenty thousand dollars from home writing you gotta, ads. You got to wonder about the societal view of the value of high school. What do you do if you start making more people more than more than most people do in a year, and you're making that in a month? How valuable is college? Does so, it have any? So here's the thing that so here's what I was tying that tangent off into. I was talking to multiple people now, multiple people now who br- bring it up to me. They, they, they start the conversation with me and then they just interrupt me and they're super skeptical and this and that and how they could, oh, no, no, I couldn't do that. That's, you know, whatever. Like that doesn't, that, I just have to see some proof. And I'm like, there's how, you know, oh, that just, you know, this and that and all the skepticism and all this, that just wouldn't work. And okay, well, that's fine. You just be that. That's, I'm not, I'm not here to convince you to do stuff. And I'll, I just have to see. I just have to see. I have to see. And I just want to be like, "Are you a millionaire? Are you a billionaire?" And then just, and then when they get offended, be like, "No, I'm. You know, I'm not either. I'm just, just asking. You know, not offensively. Are you a millionaire? Well, no. Okay. Well, that person is. What's the difference? You know, they have all this skepticism because they were told to do the college thing that mm-hmm. you had to have this piece of paper to do this, to do this. You had to. You know, this is the way that everybody's told that things have to happen. Yep. So you and then when someone comes at you with a different viewpoint, you immediately shoot it down. But then you don't th- take the second to think of how come there are people who f- who daily drivers are Ferraris? How come there are people who live in mansions? How come there are people that do this? You know what they do? They're really good at selling shit. You know what doesn't teach you how to sell shit? College doesn't teach you how to sell shit. <laughs> See, that's the thing is like your whole life is selling. Like if you yeah, can't sell, yeah. you will never be successful. Yeah. It's interesting, like um, parallel paths, you know, where you were you were going and learning and I was doing the same thing. And that's the that's the same same story, you know, and everywhere that you're learning from, you're selling all the time. Mm-hmm. You sell for friends, you sell, you know, in your business, you sell at your job. Like I'm going to do this report. Well, it's all sales. 
Yeah. Like the whole everything. Mm-hmm. It's 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 influence, motivation, yeah. selling. Yeah. And and people get they just don't like it. Right. I don't think they understand. They, yeah. Or understand how much they're being sold and sold to just a bunch of right. BS all the time. And it's just like you're like, oh yeah, I sales all oh, that's just and I'm like, you were sold on this viewpoint. Yeah. You are sold on talking this way. Like you sell yourself to me, you sell yourself to everybody else. Your inability to handle your emotions makes you a bad salesman, which means that people don't like you, which I fall prey to a lot of the time too. Like, like no matter what happens in your daily life, you have to be able to cancel that shit out and do what you need to do, right? Because the salesman's always, hey, how you doing, Tyson? Looking good. I love that beard on you, man. Mm-hmm. Mohawk. That's fucking kick ass, man. Why are you in here today? It doesn't matter that something bad just happened to me. If I could talk to you like that, like an old, you know, whatever, yeah. like friend and be all about you right now and help you out, yeah. you're going to like me. Whether I'm selling you this sign or not, which means that I was a good salesman in selling my friendship or my acquaintance or my, you know, whatever to you. Your life isn't selling. We got off on a tangent here. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next thing after reindeer poop? Uh, speaking of selling, what all data did we have on that Mesopotamian uh, beer, beer ad? 4,000 BC. Did they have any kind of like a, was there a picture of it? Yes, there was. It said it just said drink Enzo Enzo's beer or something like that. Yeah. Something something E N. There was an E and an N and a Z and an O. And I don't know if there's any other letters. It was like drink Enzo's beer and there wasn't a whole lot else. And it was like it's I wondered if we could get a print of that. I thought it might be a really cool wall art I- wall art item. Yeah. I mean speaking of sale like like that should be a hint, man. Like advertising and sales has been around Four so thousand what, what years was really exciting for me is, is some of the best training that you can get. Some of it hundred year old, and a lot of it even older than that. But a lot of the really good sales manuals are actually really old. It, it, it doesn't. It's not pertinent that you have to know what your sales channel is today. You need to know how to go about it. Right. Yeah. Like that. That was. It's just like there. I like that about it. Is that it's not. It's not about what you pick. It's about how you how you apply it. Yeah. I mean, and, and like, yeah, because still today I can find some, r- uh, there's really, really, really great sales knowledge and tactics from old, old books. I mean, old books that were written 100, 200 years ago are still relevant in marketing. Mm-hmm. The principles uh, are the same. And and it be above all else, man, it's just how you communicate and talk with other individuals. That's sales. Yeah. You know, sales is not like, hey, man. Let me tell you why this coffee cup is better than yours. It's not, man. It's like, hey, man, who are you? How are you doing? Where are you from? How's your family? What what brings you in here today? How can I help you? If you can sell like that to where it's just like, man, I just want to know what you are, who you are, that's and what you need, you will fucking the, sell. It's what the outcome goal is, is helping somebody else get what they want. And yeah. They help you get what you want. Exactly. Like I tell you, a bad, ba- a bad salesman. I stopped at this car lot and I was looking at this truck. This truck was a little bit, a little bit out of my price range, but I was still looking, you know. And the salesman comes up. He's like, "Hey, man, how can I help you?" And I was like, "Oh, I was just looking at this truck." He's like, "Oh, yeah, this and that." Instantly goes into like finances, and I'm like, "Oh, yeah, it's a little bit out of my price range." And I look back, and I'm kind of looking around. I look back, and he's gone. He's walking back to the office. Just. Okay, I guarantee that guy hasn't sold anything since. Because I probably would have left with something. It might not have been that truck. I might have tried to make it happen. That's a good reminder. But because you didn't want to work with me, I don't want any piece of you. Yeah, or the business. Yeah, I like, all right, I never bought anything from there. That's just really, really bad salesmanship. They have to build those relationships because they might come back in a year. Yeah. Like, well, here's the thing. I've sold cars, but not for, like on a lot, right? I was never a salesman. I like, just sold shit on Craigslist, right? But like if I was a salesman and you came in and kind of that same thing, I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? What's going on? And you're just like, I'm just looking. Oh, you're just looking? Right on, man. Your cousin came in yesterday. Been, you know, been looking. And then your uh, your brother <laughs> came in, was looking. How You know, so how are you doing? You know, like what's going on? And you kind of make you laugh. And so what are you in here for? What do you, what do you, what do you kind of, what are you looking at? What are you looking for? You're like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just, I don't think that's time for me. I'm like, okay, come on. Come, hey, come, come with me. Just come. With. And then I try to get you to follow me and I talk with you. And I go to the biggest piece of shit on that car lot. The biggest hunk of junk on that car lot. And I go, how about this? <laughs> and I wouldn't say anything. I just shut up. How about this? What do you think? 
They have to go long because now it's entertaining. Because now, because yeah, now you're having a good time. <laughs> yeah. And th- and through this process, I know your name now. I know it's not been looking or was looking yeah. or have been looking. Yeah. It's Tyson, and I don't know what you don't want to tell me because you don't really want to deal with the salesman. But now it's funny. Yeah. I take you the biggest piece of shit on the car. I say, "What do you think, Tyson? How about this for you?" <laughs> I just look right at you and stop. You'd be like, "No, man, no," and I'd be like, "What? What's wrong with it?" <laughs> And you're like, well, it's old. Okay, so he wants something newer. <laughs> and it's and it's a car. Oh, okay, so he wants a truck. Yeah. So now I know that you want a newer truck. Okay, all right. So now I'll start just taking you along while I'm having a conversation with you and start looking at trucks that are a little bit not brand new, but newer. Boom. That easy. And now it's funny, and now I learned something about you. I know why you're in there. Yep. And then through there, I would ask your kids, and I'd be like, okay, he wants a four-door. Or no, he just wants a work truck. I would, I would. Yeah. You could gain that knowledge. That's how you sell shit. That's how you can. That's how you can get that commission day in and day out. You know what I like about it? College won't teach you that. Yeah, college won't teach you that. What I like about it is that everybody, everything would be better if everybody was a little better at it. Yeah. Because then they would know not bullshit any time. You know, they would know how to make it entertaining. Be like, yeah, he's not really gonna buy that, but I got, I got a few moments of time. Why don't we? Why don't we connect here? Mm-hmm. You know, why don't we have a little bit of mutual something going on? Everybody can improve. Yeah, that. Well, and here's the thing. You know how many people just and in Okanagan you're more likely to get? Everybody's more likely to get what they want if everybody improves that skill. Exactly. And you know how many people just in Okanagan will buy a car from the same person yeah. or the same place over. To tons, especially because it's a small town and people just like that shit anyway. It's, it's real shit. Friends. Like myself, we're looking to buy something. They take me to this place for this guy. Well, because of that, like, you yeah. got to know, like, I don't, if I want to sell you this cup, I'm not going to force, I'm not going to just try to get you to walk out of here with this cup. If you don't want the cup, you don't want the damn cup. I might, you know, try to overcome a couple objections and I might try it a little bit, but I'm going to make it a fun experience and I'm trying to get to know you a little bit. So I know you on a first name basis. Now, at least if you don't want the cup and you hear that somebody else does, you might tell them you're going to tell them about me. Yeah. Now, when you oh, are man, ready to he buy was a cup, talking about a shitty coffee cup the other day. I yeah. know where there's a good coffee cup. Yeah, and then also if you have friends that are looking for coffee cups, you're going to be like, "Hey, I know this guy. He's a real nice guy. He's got a bunch of coffee cups. Yeah. Go check him out." You know, and that's the thing is like is like you miss out on it's like eighty percent, eighty or ninety percent of sales initially. If you have ten people come in, you might sell one to two. But if you are a true salesman, you will get probably seventy percent of those back. They'll come back for it. They're going to remember you. And that's if that's why people fail at sales. That's exactly why oh. I failed at sales. I ate shit at sales, dude. When I did affiliate marketing, I ate shit for months. Uh, it took me a long, long time yeah. because I just I was just trying to get that sale. I didn't care about you. I just wanted you to hand me the money so I can get a yeah. fat commission until I was like, oh, yeah. When I started just giving value and I started just truly helping people and seeing if like the product that I had would actually help you and just genuinely make connections with you, oh, Shit's a little different now. Now people want to buy that. Or if they don't, they'll come back later or somebody will be like, hey, so-and-so told me to talk to you. Yeah, crazy. And then it just starts building. Bike to beer, huh? Back to beer. Spruce tips have been popular. Dave's been brewing them up. I think we're probably on the back end of the spruce tip brewing, but uh, maybe some some of the folks in the higher elevations. I bet you Ben's just getting just getting going. Spruce tip. I sort of forgot that it was kind of colonial style brewing. Mm. Like when we didn't have many hops. So, yeah, Dave's been brewing. His mm. spray st- Did you guys like his, his uh, spruce tip saison? Yeah. That was a real, like a true saison. That was a really good beer. I thought that was pretty tasty. Yeah. yeah. Dave's been brewing some tasty stuff, yeah. man. I like it. I like sharing this brewing stuff out there. I really do. Yeah. Because then everybody else is brewing. I don't have to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I still have to, and I still do brewing, but now, now I can try like 10 batches of beer. All from different sources instead of just my own. It's pretty cool. You get to try Tanner's beer and Amanda's beer and Dave's beer and Andy's beer. Mm-hmm. Yep. Other Andy's beer. Other Andy's beer. <laughs> yeah. Andy and Andy. Yeah. 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 We get quite the list now. There's a there's a good couple of handfuls of people yep. in our tiny ass town. Yeah. And I'm still bugging people for and care packages. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dave forgot his care package. I bugged him. He brought his care package. <laughs> That's right. That's good. Ah, threw a monkey wrench in the whole works. We had our beer swap fridge going, and, and, and like all was looking well. This whole COVID thing's kind of yeah. Well, yeah, it'll come back around. There's a light but at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, the the prep work 
involved now, it will be that much better later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, new fridge coming that we can uh, add into the beer swap fridge group. Maybe bring a couple of new styles in. Colonial Brewing. We have that book. What is that? Do you we remember? We send. That? We send. Oh, uh, it's American American beer history, basically. Nice. That's kick ass. Somebody somebody brought it, dropped it off. Let us let us check it out. Find that one. But yeah, spruce tips. Tasty. Tasty, tasty. I like spruce tip IPA. Of which I can't get any for the restaurant. <sighs> guess we'll have to make some. I guess so. Yeah. So we we saw it on a we need to make a good recipe for a four and a half percent. I think so. Four, Express. four and a half, something in there that's drinkable four. so I can have a few and not get sauced, especially up in here when it's hot, man. Like going golf and it's a ninety five hundred yeah. degrees. That's the last thing you want is a big thick beer that gets you sauced. We'll design that one up. I'd say outdoorsy. Good camping yeah. beer. Yeah. Reindeer poop. Reindeer poo. <laughs> What'd you call it? The vel- the red velvet express? Yep. I think it should be exciting. A nice amber white chocolate ale. When do you start to shoot? You went rafting. How high was the river? Not too bad. So Amanda went hi- uh, rafting a little while ago. Um, is it rafting season like on the Deschutes? It's almost time to get out there and go rafting, huh? I guess middle of August. Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah. Have to start packaging our beers in the stainless con- containers instead of the the glass pressurized containers. Yeah. yeah. How? I haven't went whitewater rafting in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, we'll, maybe we can go find ourselves a guided tour raft trip be kind of exciting the last time i went was on single person inflatables down like the the class big whatever whatever the class that's like dangerously big and there were single person rafts it was pretty treacherous and a lot of fun yeah <laughs> tanner will be back tanner's leaving this time i've i've walked away in the middle of the show no numerous times so yeah sports beer be interesting to see what everybody's uh favorite activity for the summer is Try to figure out what kind of beer I'd take with me on a motorcycle adventure. I want to go on a nice motorcycle adventure. I like the dirt trails, not so much road trails. So to pack some, I would probably go with the higher percentage, like the the eight and a half percent sweet heifer or something like that. Have less liquid with me from my backpack and the straw. Oh wait, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> That's never happened before. Yeah. So Red Velvet Express. Reindeer poop. I'm expecting pills and malt, red X, the steeping of white coffee. And this is kind of an exciting twist on the recipe that we ended up tasting over at Genus Brewing. Genus Brewing guys did uh what is their little little meerkat poop coffee beer? The coffee colch? Coffee colch. Man, that was a good beer. <sighs> That's really good. Yeah. I figured we have to oh, we have to brew up one of their their recipes too. So I I bought a couple of those brew kits. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to brew that up sometime. Make our own coffee kolsch. Oh, do you know what else? Do you know what else? No. Okay. Here's what else. We're going to talk about the uh, live brew session. Yeah. Yep. When? Which which live brew session? <laughs> the next one. The next one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because we we brew. So we're skipping this week, right? Yep. Yep. This is the fourth this Saturday is taster week. Hopefully, everybody's out there trying their own home brew or planning their next batch. And this is your opportunity to start planning your next batch. Exactly. Good lead in there, Tanner. Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. What beer are we gonna brew? There's a lot of options. I'm not sure I can choose. Yeah. yeah. What do we want to do for our for our next next class session? We could try this one. We could. Or yeah. we can send everybody to get themselves coffee kolsch kits. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, portion these off. At Pilsner. Did we ever get any feedback from the Pilsner batches that were made? Ooh, when did we sample yours? Did we? S- is yours gone? No. I don't know. I don't know where it's at. I think Amanda drank it all. So, yeah. what is that? August 1st, right? That is Mead Day. Oh, who had the Pilsners? It was uh, Eric and James, right? Yeah. I don't think they brewed one, them. One kit in Canada. It's also some form of national Mead Day. Everybody can make their own list of every day that's some day. But what was on my calendar is Mead Day. I sent out an email about Mead. So we'll be able to sample our meads by then. At least at least mine. So that'll be kind of cool. So it'll be mead tasting. Anybody else want to make their uh, batch this week? They could be possibly mead tasting on mead day too, along with our live brew session. Mm-hmm. What do we make? Two gallons of mead, and we just use three pints of honey, a pound and a half of fruit, and yeast. Yep. That's it. That's it? That's it. <laughs> you, brought you, it. you can make that up in your afternoon today. Yeah, it took us, I, I think the video, I think it took us like an hour total, an hour and like, 10 or 15 minutes 
Yep. Total. Go shopping for some fruit. Go shopping for some honey. Tonight, make up your batch of mead. Yep. If anybody needs a... Uh, what, just... Is it what, like... I'll send you an airlock and a and a package of yeast in the mail for something cheap. Send us a, me- send us a message. What you got to do is just heat your water up to just under boil, and that's like it. Yep. And then just cool it down, chill it down, and... Pour the mead, pour the fruit, heat it up, sterilize it, chill it, some ice, ferment, call it good. Yep, done. It's wait. pretty easy. Right, yep, wait. It's um, fun to watch it bubble. For anybody came that's out not any anybody that's not made their batches of beer yet, sure yeah. is exciting watching it bubble. And they just sit right over there. And you can hear them while we're podcasting. Oh, yeah. bloop, bloop. We'll have to see if we can grab some of those bloops out of the video sometime. Bloop. Um, ours um, came in around. Our meat came in around eight percent. Ooh, do we want to try the Christmas beer? I was talking about that. I Christmas already have Christmas triple. No, I mean brewing. Oh, do we want to do our uh, aged beer? Sure. We could do that August 1st. We could do the Belgian triple. That Ooh. kid's ready to go. It tastes good. And then for whoever else. And then there, there could be like a prize. If you have any bottles left on Christmas to actually taste or give to somebody, we'll give you a special prize. <laughs> 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 if you're patient enough to let those bottles actually sit, I'll send you something special. I don't know what it is yet. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Maybe we should do that. I think that sounds like a good plan. The Christmas ale. I am down for that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, Christmas ale. You can brew it now and have it in like seven months. So we have our brew day planned out. All right. So we Everybody are Everybody needs to come get their kits. Do Christmas something or another. Yeah, we'll do some Belgian triple. It'd be you'll be the most prepared Christmas shopper ever. You, your wife will say that she's got all her shopping done in in October. Be like, ah, beat you, dude. Got I'm it. gonna start doing that shit. I haven't done that. I'm gonna start making beers and wines and shit like that. You know, because I I, fu- I I fucking hate Christmas shopping. Yeah, and that's an experience that you have with somebody that you share. That you can't get them some shit off a Walmart shelf that ever competes with. With a bottle of beer. I mean, you have all the pretty bottles now. Like, I'll just make my mom a bottle of fucking red wine or give her like one of the mead ones. One of the meads. So coming up, uh, there's a there's a couple of grape growers here in town that want to that that sell grapes for doing wine. That'd be kind of fun. Fun batch to do sometime. And seltzers and kombucha. Yeah. Kombucha. Kombucha. I don't drink kombucha, but Amanda does. She likes drinking. (laughs) There's she she drinks vinegar and then she also she also puts vinegar on her face <laughs> and she uh, for anybody that wants to reference the previous show <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's a boot it up your sales game up M- your sales game match your beer with your sports match your beer with your sports and get ready to brew with us soon yes remember brewing beer is like fishing you could just go buy fish from the store, but that sucks. Fishing is fun. Brewing beer is fun. Bye, everybody. Bye.